All right, hello once again, Jeff Scott of Rankin Technical College, and as part of the Rankin Technical College AWD, or Application and Website Development Program, and in particular, the AWD 1111.NET Framework with Web Databases class, I'm doing a series of video presentations based on the textbook we're going to use for the class for the fall 2019 semester. That book is ProASP.NET MVC5, an A-Press text by Mr. Adam Freeman. We are in the middle of Chapter 9. Actually, we're coming toward the end of it. And we're up to implementing the order processor on page 244. We need a component in the application which can handle the details of an order for processing. In keeping with the principles of the MVC model, the author is going to define an interface for the functionality, write an implementation of the interface, and then associate the two using the DI container Ninject. Let's hope this works OK. So first, we are to add an interface to the abstract folder in domain. And that interface will be called iOrder Processor. Again, it will be in the abstract folder, add class, all right, iOrderProcessor.cs. Edit the contents so they match figure shown here on page 245. Well, that was interesting. That's what happens when you press the wrong keys on your keyboard? All right. There we go. Okay. Onward and upward on page 245. Implementing the interface. The implementation of the iOrder processor is going to deal with orders by emailing them to the site administrator. As the author says, he is simplifying the process. Most sites would not simply email an order, but we have not provided for the processing of credit cards, etc. As the focus is to be on MVC, we're, an email is what's going to be used. Create a new class file in the concrete folder of the domain that's called emailorderprocessor.cs. Edit the contents so that they match listing 915. This class causes the built-in SMTP support, including in the .NET Frame Library, to send an email. And again, there's a very, very extremely good chance we won't be able to do anything with this. This is also very long. All right? It is over two and a half pages. So here's the first part. Don't worry if we get a lot of red here. As mentioned, this is over three pages. Here's the second part. On page 246. And finally, the third part, which is on the top of the next page here, on 247. Okay, looks like we've got no red. Wow, that's pretty neat, pretty interesting. Now, this is big. It is almost 100 lines. I'm not going to pretty it up, as I've done with some of the rest of these. I'm just going to leave it the way it is. But I am going to do a file save all because it seems like this would be an opportune time to do so all right so we're on page 247 
says, don't worry if you don't have an SMTP server available. We don't. If you set the email settings dot write as file property to true, the email messages will be written as files to the directory specified in the file location property. The directory must exist and be writable. All right, the files will be written with a dot EML extension that can be read in any text editor. The location the author set was C colon backslash sports underscore store underscore emails. I'm not going to worry about that for now, period. All right, but I'm going to go up to registering the implementation. Now that we have an implementation of the iOrder processor interface and the means to configure it, we can use Ninject to create instances of it. Edit the Ninject dependency resolver in the infrastructure folder of the UI. Here. in the infrastructure folder here. There it is. All right, so we want to come in there, and one of the first things we want to do is we want to do a using system.configuration, which will probably be gray for now, because we haven't done anything with it yet. All right and go down towards the bottom of the file where we've got our add bindings, which right now is very small. <clears throat> and we are told to add this to, to it. Looks a little ugly. Let's pretty it up just a tad. And the author says here that he's created an email settings object which is used in conjunction with Ninject with constructor arguments so that we can inject it into the email order processor constructor when new instances are created to service requests. All right. And it looks like we have to go into the web.config file. And we want the main one, which is the one in our, oops, that's where we were, in our root folder. So down here, and where we've added these keys, we want to add one extra key at the bottom. Now, as we go through this, please be cognizant of the fact that the author said if you don't have the email, this is where we're going to set this to true, okay? Okay, now we've got to complete the controller class. Let's do a file save all. And because I don't like this file, especially open anytime it doesn't have to be, I'm going to close a whole bunch of this stuff. We're coming to, again toward the end of the chapter here. All right. So I'm on the bottom of page 248, completing the cart controller. <clears throat> to complete the cart controller class, we need to modify the constructor so that it demands an implementation of the iOrder processor interface and add a new action method that will handle the HTTP form post request when the user clicks the complete order button.
so we need to add this up into our constructor it looks like so we need the cart controller in our controllers close a couple things here because again as always we've got a lot of stuff open Okay, and again at the bottom of here, all right, we've got that private, looks like we even want to change this, so I don't know if I copied all of it earlier or not yes I did copy so we can remove the current controller we've now got that and we replace this again as always move that over just a tad to make it a little easier to look at looks like too we need that there we go All right. Then we've got a checkout right here. And right below that checkout, we're going to put an HTTP post for checkout. So this is our get checkout, and we have to put in a post. see that the checkout section method we added is decorated with a post attribute meaning it'll be invo invoked for a post request in this case when the user submits the form once again we are relying on the model binder system both for the shipping details parameter which is created automatically using the HTTP form data and the cart parameter which is created using the custom binder all right the change in the constructor forces the author to update the unit tests created all right finally on the bottom here of page 249 the author mentions whoops on the bottom of page 249 the MVC framework checks the validation constraints that, have been, constraints that have been applied to the shipping details using the data annotation attributes, and any validation violations will be passed to the action method through the model state property. We can see if there's any problems by checking the model state dot is valid property. When we call the model state dot add model error to register an error message if there are no items in the cart. Okay, this will be explained in more depth and breadth of coverage later on in the book. Now, there are unit tests on page 250 and page 251. And remember, one of the things that I've done is I've gone and commented out all those unit tests. So I'm not going to put them in there. All right, I'm just going to leave this the way it is. And I'm going to jump back to page 252. Displaying validation errors. All right, we have just a few more pages left in the chapter here. The MVC framework, as mentioned there, will use the validation attributes applied to the shipping details class to validate user data. data rather. However, we need to make a couple of changes to display any problems to the user. The first issue is that we need to provide a summary of these problems to the user. This is especially important with problems related to specific fields. To do this, we can go to the and use the HTML.validationSummaryHelper method, 
we can add that to our checkout dot CSHTML all right so let's go in and add that right now There is our checkout.cshtml. After the using begin form here, before the ship to, right there, we will add at html.validation summary. All right. The next step is to create some CSS styles that target the classes used by the validation summary. In other words, we'll make them red and maybe even bold. I don't know. Um, we've created a new style sheet called errorstyles.css in the content folder and define the styles shown in the listing in 929. This is the same set of styles used back in Chapter 2. All right, well, let's do this. Let's first go into our <clears throat> content. Let it, let's right mouse click here. And choose add new item. We have to find style sheet. There it is. And this is error dot, I'm sorry, error styles. E R R O R S T Y L E S dot C S S. Okay. Get rid of what's in there. Let's add this. Again, I'm very anal about a lot of these things, such as I like the way that it, it breaks it up for me, but I like my curlies on their own line. Let's save that. You've seen this kind of thing before <clears throat> where we can go into our layout.cshtml file right here, all right, where we've got all of our content and right before our title, I'm going to click right there and I'm going to drag in that. Okay, so I now have the style sheet in there. Hoping I didn't miss anything. I am up to page 253. And the author says, with these changes, the validation of errors will be reported through highlighting and throwing a summary. So let's do this. Let's do our old file, save all. Let's run the program. And we're going to leave every field blank inside of this form. And after we do that, we're going to check and see whether or not those error messages come up. All right, so we'll add this. We will check out. We'll put nothing in there. Complete order. There we go. Please enter a name, first name, city, state, country. We don't have the sorry your cart is empty, mainly because we do have a product in here. So let's let's go back and back again. Let's remove that. Check out now. Sorry your cart is empty. Very good. All right, we are almost finished here. About two more pages left in the chapter. I'm at 20 minutes. The author says the data submitted by the user is sent to the server before it's validated. Notice client side validation. The problem with server side is that it isn't used. Yeah. Server side validation is usually complemented by client side. We've talked about this before. All right. This is going to be a little longer. I apologize, but I'd like to finish this. This is all that's left right here. To complete the process, we'll show the customers a page that confirms the order has been processed. Create a new view called completed 
under views cart. Okay. Views cart, right mouse click, add view. We're going to call it completed. Hit enter. There it is. And we will add this. So as you can see, we've got thanks. Thanks for placing your order. We'll ship your goods as soon as possible. Very, very simplistic. Okay. So we're going to run this. But as it says, we've completed all the major parts of the customer-facing portion. It might not be enough to worry Amazon, but we have a product catalog, and it's done pretty well. It really and truly is. All right, before we go into Chapter 10, the Sports Mobile, I want to very quickly, in fact, I'll run this. I'm going to save it now and stop, and I'm going to run this again as the beginning of Chapter 10. So let's do a file, save all. I will run it. But while it's getting itself prepared, I'm going to come over to here and I'm going to stop the run.